So, um, as many of you are aware, we are studying the Christian home. And so, for those of you who are coming back, um, I hope I hope um, you will not be so distant from what you are learning. Maybe you have followed from the house. No, you have not been followed. Alright, so we've been looking at the Christian home um, since uh, March, since the COVID started. Um, for all this while, we've been spending time at home, right? And so we took the opportunity to sort of um, give us an idea as to how the importance of the hope in the life of an individual, why the church and as individuals we must pay attention to building a solid Christian home. Um, beginning from last week, last two weeks, we've been looking at the personality portraits of the wife in the Christian home, the kind of wife that will be able to build a Christian home. Of course, we have finished with that of the, the husband, the man. We looked at the personality portraits, the role that he ought to be playing and all that. And so, let's, some of you were around last week, right? So let's sort of recap what we discussed. Um, what what sort of personality traits, and we are using um, 
we are building this uh, lesson based on some characters in scripture. And so we look at some characters in scripture and what um, personality trait we can learn and how that would be useful and how that is useful in building the Christian hope. Welcome. Yeah, so uh, those of us who were here last week, what did we say? What, what do you remember from our class? Moses. Like Eve before the fall. Like Eve before the fall. Uh -huh. She must be a help She must be a help me. Um, you see, we live in the 21st century, and sometimes the idea of help, a helper, a house help, is sort of uh, misconstrued. And it's, it's the same with the, the idea of the wife being the health needs of the man. It is usually understood to be an inferior position. Okay? But last week we, we learned that it is not. Um, it is not in the sense that even God himself is said to be the helper of human kind. Psalm 46, verse 1, he reads, um, God is our refuge and, and, uh, God is our refuge and, huh? Huh? God is our refuge and strength. The second line says, an ever-present help in times of trouble. So, God is a helper in times of what? Trouble. And God helps us without feeling or without being inferior. You get it? And so when the wife is functioning as a help meet, she is virtually functioning like God in the life of the husband, right? And so the wife as the help meet I do. What do you have to do? Huh? <laughs> the wife is doing for, for the man on earth what God does for the man from, from heaven. Do you get it? And so, when the wife is functioning as a help meet, he becomes the refuge and the strength of the man. She becomes an ever present source of encouragement, of help in times of what? Trouble. And so we must not see the idea of the woman being the help meet as, as an inferior kind of function. Because God helps man without, God helps humankind without being inferior to us. So let us try to shut off the idea that um, help meet makes the woman inferior. She's not. In fact, as I said, when a woman functions as a help meet, she virtually functions as the God of the man's hope. God with a small G. You understand? All right, so what else? Uh -huh. Like Rebecca. She must be modest. She must be modest. Yes. She must be modest, she must be hospitable, and she must be industrious. You know Rebecca, when Eliezer, the, the, the servant of Abraham, was sent to find a wife for Isaac. We met Rebecca going to fetch water. Industry. She was hard working. In some ways, Rebecca was the poorest to one woman, right? She wake up early in the morning and she puts things in place to ensure that the hope is, is, is up and going. And she saw this man, a stranger, and was kind enough to initiate something of, a, uh, of, 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 of hospitality value. She offered to give him water 
and then proceeded to offer water to his um, flock or his, his donkeys and stuff. And so the woman that creates, that is able to build a Christian home, and one of the qualities of a Christian home is hospitality, is industry and modest. And we learned that Rebecca was a pretty woman, right? She was beautiful. Her beauty did not get her to behave in ways that is consistent of some people who, who think they are beautiful. Usually, um, not always the case, but uh, some lack of modesty with people who are blessed with certain things. Religious, I believe. Um, there's a question. No, a comment. A comment. Yeah. Yeah. From our sister, Creed Party. She says, like Hannah, she must be like Hannah. Uh -huh. She must be a prayer warrior and fight the battles in the family. Yes. Okay, so she has moved us on. Let's go to Hannah. We all know the story of Hannah, don't you? I mean, so what's the story of Hannah? We know Hannah better than Yes. Hannah had an ob obnoxious rival in the home. And she suffered what most families would dread. So it tells you that um, from all societies, most societies are the same. When it comes to childbirth, it is something that is valued. And when the, the woman is perceived not to have that capacity, it comes with some challenges. But Hannah did not engage in a verbal kind of battle. She went to where the battle is really fought, the battle of life. She went to before God. She went on her knees. And on her knees, having her head her, and raised her up and gave her, not just the son, Samuel became a new generation leader in Israel. Samuel replaced Eli. And so that is the kind of woman that is able to build a Christian home. A woman of prayer. A woman of, 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 of spiritual um, strength and power. So that is that kind of woman. Who else? Like Deborah, she must be courageous. Like Deborah, she must be. So what's the story about Deborah? Who was she? Don't say me. I'll tell you what. No one has got to do that. She has. Well, Deborah was considered one at one time um, hmm? a judge a judge in Israel. And so there was a battle, and she went to the commander and sort of encouraged him to gather the troops for the battle. And his name was Barak. He told Deborah, if you are going to go with us, with me, we will go. And the woman acceded that, yes, I will go with you. And because of that, of her presence, they were comfortable to, to go to battle. And I'm saying that if there is a wife in their home who has courage and demonstrates strength like Deborah, there is nothing the husband in the home cannot do and cannot achieve. If, if a wife is constantly prepping and encouraging and stirring and stimulating strength and confidence in the husband, there is nothing, no battle that the family cannot win. And so that is the personality trait of the wife, I don't know, of the Christian home or in the Christian home. What else? Who else? Mm -hmm. Right. Sarah. Sarah. Where she must be respectful and submissive to. 
Yes. And we say that Sarah was submissive and did not think of, 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 of submission as a human rights violation, right? And I think we should not believe at this point, we discussed it, that um, we, some of us tend to think that submission is difficult than love. So I think that is that. But it's not the case. All of them are difficult. Submission is not, is not the most difficult among the, the requirements for, a, for a, a Christian home. The man loving the wife is also difficult. Amazing. Honestly. No, what? As one game, what? Who do you mean? Huh? Oh, okay, well, maybe he's not. But. She said loving the wife. She's not my wife. Did I say wife or woman? What? It's a wife. Okay. No, 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 not, not your mom. That's all my media. <laughs> not your mom. Wife. And we discussed that, right? It's not easy. So let us stop belittling, belittling. Maka. Belittling. That, oh, no. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. To love one woman all the days of your life. When there are plenty others, it don't be easy. So let us not let appreciate it. And so the man, the husband must appreciate the the willingness of the wife to submit. No my ear can answer. Sometimes the husband may, may demonstrate just sheer stupidity. Um, Decisions are short. Uh, leadership, no. But a smart one must admit, and yet it is that in the same way, you may not be the, the you may not have all the specs expected in a wife, but we are supposed to love you. You only value you above all the rest. Sometimes when there are. Uh, Alternative. <laughs> so you know, it. So I think when we appreciate that each one is doing something critical, it helps. What else? I want you to do your yeah, yeah. Alright, so let's go on to this material. I. I have not mentioned her yet. You do her. You do But if, if it doesn't show up in the lineup, you can bring her up. The video now will have her. What's it? I know. There is a woman in scripture and she completed the story of Deborah. Her name is Mishona Mangazumabo. Remember a musician by the name Jael? Yeah, she's. Oh, by the name, how many of you? You remember her? You do know. <laughs> but there is also this woman who is scripture, who demonstrates courage and initiative. Now, um, this is in Judges chapter 5, verse 24. And it, it, it is linked with the story with Deborah. When they went to battle, the commander of the, the um, enemy troops, Odrani, um, 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 what kind of was it? Huh? He, he left. <laughs> Retreat. 
Well, he fled. He fled. And fortunately or unfortunately, she, she went to the house of this woman, Jaya. And for whatever reason, she recognized that this is an enemy soldier. And had a nice way, and eventually he killed him. And so what the men, I, I cannot say failed or could not do, this Jaya woman found a way to finish the job. What Deborah started, it was this woman that finished the job, that killed the, 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 the commander of the enemy soldiers. And so I think there is something to be said for the courage of this woman, for the strength of this woman. And so when, when there is when a woman, when a wife possesses this courage, it, it gives some sense of security for the home. Now, one of the things one of, uh, in dealing with young women, one of the vocabulary you hear them use a lot is, yeah, I'm afraid, I can't do it. Oh, they go immediately to me, and they are comfortable. They think it is okay. But, you see, fear, fear, fear cripples. Fear entangles. Fear immobilizes. Fear debilitates. Like, you see, if if the family can achieve something, the fear of one party in the family will stop, will cripple, will immobilize the movement of, of the family towards that agenda, that purpose. And so when you have a wife in the home, always seeing the dark side, expressing, well, sometimes you have to, you have to, but it, it should not become the refrain. Oh, where the to be you? Where the afraid of? I can't do this. I can't go here. It doesn't help. But when you have a wife that demonstrates courage, yeah? you know, fear is... Uh, courage is not the absence of fear, right? You know that. It is, it is fear under control. Sometimes those providing the leadership, it doesn't mean that they don't have any form of fear. Some of the most fearful people you find are leaders. And in this case, the men, the husbands. What they need, what they know how to do is to put the fear in check, control it. But if you find a fearful husband who is trying to control his fears, but there is a wife who's always accentuating and tell you with me, hey, who body? No, cast story. Madame will be cool. Why are now who's slow? But who shall also? But here is your wife bringing up points that should make you more fearful. And then I'm like, where would you get to? Huh? You know, the family would always be in a, a, a comfortable lead in your comfort zone. There's nothing you can do, there's nothing you can achieve. And so, the personality trait of a wife in a Christian home is one of courage. And I tell you, if a fearful husband has a courageous woman, the ripple effect, the impact, is outstanding. Was outstanding. You can do it. I'm confident you will be, will be able to achieve it. You have what it takes. And so when the husband is weak, he finds strength in the wife. Just your words alone, just your presence, I will be behind you. And you see, what they stop their husbands to do, what they discourage them from doing, 
they admire in other husbands. Hey, Madam Wenikuru. The same thing I'm trying to say about them, the men in a study in our side. So that's the politics of the whole. Always looking for what what we don't have instead of focusing on what we have. So let's let's we can learn something from Jael. And then there is Esther, like Esther, the wife in the Christian home must be one who uses her feminine power for the good of the family. One who seeks counsel, regardless of her social status. And so there are two things we can talk about, Esther. The use of the feminine power. We know the story of Esther, right? Abuja, what's the story of Esther? I'm coming to you, so get ready. Why do you guys so early? You don't believe they were virgins. It's okay. Go on. Yes. His uncle was Mordecai, right? But the, the wicked man in the, the palace was Haman. Yes. And, and then we tried to, um, the way we spoke, they said, Anari will kill the Jews. Mm -hmm. okay. Uncle wrote to her, mm -hmm. and then she carried, although at, at first she felt like she couldn't do it, but Uncle encouraged her, and she went back, but she had found favor again. And I think she was going to see that. She, 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 she used her feminine power, her feminine influence, yeah? Uh, me, I have always believed that the most powerful person everywhere is the woman. Mao to me. Huh? Mao to If a woman knows the influence she wields, that she can use it to bring down a whole empire or raise an empire on her own. Also, but even um, huh? also even before using her feminine influence, mm -hmm. I think she was courageous mm -hmm. in the first place because um, it was a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. Because going before the king, whilst um, you've not been caught, you you are likely to be killed mm -hmm. unless the king gives the approval. Mm -hmm. so, it was likely the king would um, could have denied approving her coming, and then she would have been slaughtered. Yes. So she, she took a very good step. Yes, that is true. I, we did not mention that because courage we have discussed in Deborah and Jael. So that is true. You have brought that up. But we want to focus on the use the the, the positive use of the feminine part. In Jezebel and others, we can find the, the negative use of the. But let's focus on this one, uh, on the, the use of the feminine power. When, and please, I'm saying this in the context of the positive, okay, not on the negative. <laughs> huh? Example. Well, that's where we are getting to. I'm going to ask the question. So, how can the wife use her, her feminine charm? For good in the hope, in the Christian hope. I do. Uh -huh. ah, say. You don't know. She is my new. I have not been charming. They are not going to charm me. Oh, yeah, sure. I 
You don't know how you have used it. Yes, and I don't know whether I have even used it before. before. Okay, then this is a good discussion. You know, like when you have power and you don't know you have power, you know, the power could be dormant or misdirected. You get it? Now, well, we have two females, married females here. So, uh huh. Even in what ways can the feminine charm be used for uh, good in the Christian world? Huh? Huh? They can get what they want. And this is it. But we have to explain the charm. Maybe we are understanding it. The charm is the qualities of the woman. So a respectful woman, when a man is respected, Well, guys, let's let's think about this Esther thing. Okay? It was a family. It was a hope. The only difference is that Esther was married to a king. And the king is leading a nation. The family is a nation of a sort, right? And what the leader in the nation does is take decisions that affect a lot of people in the nation. In this one, there were Jews in the nation that um, some negative decision would affect them negatively. And Esther used her feminine charm to avert that. And in their home, decisions are made. Right? In terms of allocation of resources, in terms of discipline, in terms of whatever. And so, the woman can always use her feminine power to influence the allocation of resources, to influence decisions, and to influence whatever goes on in the home. So although the king made this decision not to kill all Jews, but in essence, who influenced it? Esther. In fact, Esther made the decision. I, I don't want to say that, because the king would dispute it. <laughs> you get it. So, you see, so many things in the family are competing for this man's attention and decision. So many ideas, so many plans, so many directions to go. But what would account for the final direction, final decision, final plan could be influenced by the woman? How the, the spiritual life of the family could be influenced by the woman? The, 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 what the family eats, where the family goes for whatever, how, how the kids, the direction their life would take, a lot, a lot of it could be influenced by even what the man wears. Yes, I...
than she was and she was dead. And the insult and, mm -hmm. and why are you worried? Mm -hmm. God has come. So, is it not moral? God showed her favor. Because I don't think when she stood there, um, I don't know, maybe she had been doing something in the past, like as you know, say, maybe she's been submitting or whatever. But if we don't know anything that was done in the past, in that context, can we say it's God who showed her favor? And then so she got to the king and told the king what she was going through. So you have asked a question and now you have brought the the, the answer hope. Yeah, but I'm comparing it to Esther's case because don't know what she has done before. You, you don't know, but well, in the story, she is painted as um, a modest, a beautiful woman, uh, a virtuous woman. And so um, she, unlike her predecessor, she appears to have some positive outlook. You get it. And so it comes with the package. If she prayed before, it tells you the kind of woman she is. Okay, so yes, we cannot rule out the power of God. And she's smart to know that whatever she's able to achieve, God is also a part. But there is something that is in the likelihood of her, of her husband referring to her in terms of certain things. And there is more to it. You get it. Um, I'm surprised you don't know, but I will not be the one to build the cars. Who be said it Yes, with the demon. That you are. Why are you always there? Uh -huh. I, I think that for a woman to have influence, in you, most of the time it depends on how you put your. Let me say it first. How your case, it puts across your case. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, in most marriages, it's more like cutting a deal. Cutting a deal, yes. If Negotiations. You this, yes, then I will do this or I will not do that because you did not do this. And so I think that that's, that's a problem. But for a virtuous woman, I think one who would have influence in her home to present it in a way as a request for the man to think about it. I so, think that's what Esther probably did. The king thinks, as you said, he will contest the decision that Esther made the decision. But we all know that Esther did it. So Esther did not go demanding. She went requesting. And one typical example I always use is the case of Deborah. This is a woman who had some a message directly from God. She was in charge of the whole nation of Israel. But when the message came, she called Barak, the man, to, to do what God wanted the whole nation of Israel to do. I don't know what Israel would be thinking. They knew that Deborah was a prophetess, but they, they knew that Barak was in charge, commanding the army and all that. And so Barak would um, Tell the world that if you are not going with me, then I will be free. And I think that's that's how probably we should um, approach the issues. I, I think I don't know, um, but between between the man and the woman, there is something about women that it's hard to say no, particularly if they are what we are describing. Their spirituality, their character, their virtues. There is something 
there is something about it. So um, you are smart enough to read these few things. Read about that. Okay? But I think I've said it to you, ladies. You there is there is something about your psychology, physiology, and anatomy that makes you somewhat uh, Women can start wars whenever they want. If you doubt it, ask Papa. Because he said something right now that um, if they are what we are discussing, yes. you will see that if, because they are what we are discussing, everything they say somehow makes sense. Yes. It is, it is easy for you, the man who is also what you are discussing, to buy it. So that there's that part. Okay, so uh -huh. well, so let me confess a piece. Uh -huh. <laughs> um uh, knowing the kind of woman of my wife is. Uh -huh. uh, and oh and this is that too. Uh, that's fine. And, and, uh, how, uh -huh. and how she lives with me, the kind of life she Sometimes when we have to make a decision, I've always told her, me, marriage is like, I say my, I'm the man, you're the woman. I say my, you say yours, then I make a decision. That's how it works. Most of the time, on things that I'm not very sure, I'll say what I think, she'll say what she thinks, and I'll have to make a decision. Now, if I'm not very sure of what I'm saying, I'm almost always tempted to go with her. Because they have something extra we don't have. No, you don't women are. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> you see, also, also, you see, also, you see, I'm making the decision. So let me tell you why I do that. I be out come. Well, me, I, I think it's not about the smartness of it. Women have intuition. It's something God has given to them. They are able to send something ahead. And it's born out of their deep relationship with God, and not their harnessing of fear. Their intuition and fear are two different things. One is born out of faith and a relationship with God. Fear is born out of fear. That's mere fear. So... I think, um, and I think as women, we should realize this, what we have, this, this feminine power, this hope on you. Um, 
in Genesis, that Eve was said to have his her desire would be for the man, right? The reverse is also true. Men desire their wives. Even more. You get it? And so, so now I am pointing your mind to how the feminine gender has some hold on them. It's the sheer desire of, of, of the man to please the wife. So that that desire for her will not be thwarted when the time comes. Also. Did I have a person in the So, <clears throat> now, you know, like, it's common knowledge. Men do things that would appeal and attract the female, true or false? True. So eventually the man will become like the wife. I've always said this, and it's true. With all the uh, two known things we, we appear to want to. So if you marry a smart, wise woman, and she decides to use the, the power in a good way, the man would turn out good. So Esther realized that. And even when she was taking that move, she was the queen, but she consulted Mordecai, right? So she was wise. Not only was she visually presentable, she was also good up here. Mm -hmm. There's a... Yeah, I need to do that. Hey, <laughs> it's been a while. Oh, but uh -huh. He says, also a question, please. I still don't understand how it correlates with the lady using the feminine power to her advantage, please. All the arguments given now between lovers, into brackets, husband and then wife. Uh -huh. And also, is this feminine power relating to all ladies or women, please? And then, how is the feminine the power used? To all ladies or women? Yes, that's what, that's what. You wrote, relating to all ladies or only women, please. And then, how is the feminine power used? Or only married women? Uh, can you give me a hand? So okay, go on. He's asking, like, what, what, what all that we are saying, like mm -hmm. you said, the woman is doing so that when the time comes, it's all between married people. Mm -hmm. What about single ladies? How do we use our feminine power? Don't do it now. Oh, <laughs> you can. No, you can. Where does it come to play? How can we be positive? Because maybe, now that I know you need a car, I can use my feminine power to take a car. Oh, so you guys with me, right? Well, I, I, I think, I think, naturally, as I said, all women possess that kind of thing, that kind of feminine power. How you use it, I think, is mediated by your faith and um, your character. For example, most of you are dating, right? Some of you, almost some. Even if you are not, you know, like, as we said, like, like, in the workplace, there might be a, a lady, there are guys, they want to do things that would create a good impression about them in the eyes of the females. True or false? True. I mean, true or false? Huh? So is there a way you can shape the kind of choices and decisions they make over there, knowing that um, they want to impress you. Uh, on I, I think it lunch, lunch. <laughs> yeah, it depends on your hand. I don't that. see I don't see that happening in my office. Well okay if you don't see that happening in your office, I'm sure it happens in other offices. Um because what the decision is the best for the way management is, is good. No, move away from the, the macro, my management and staff. Okay. We are talking about interpersonal relationships in the office. Okay. Boy-girl relationships. 
How many of you have been dressed up because you were once complimented by a female? As I did, I would say, yeah. How many of you have been, you know, wanted to repeat that kind of uh, combination? How many of us? For that. So, don't, you know, it appears. Um, Ketuak, Ketuak, fine. Those are the things that shape. Organic carpets. What's so kind of like it? Oh, what kind of it's only there. The Akosia Less Yen. Yeah, okay. Um, So that is a form of feminine. And I, uh, yes, and that's how we go to that. She could have been, she could have asked for anything uh, in a positive way, she would have had it. Mm -hmm. So she was just a favor in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Even if her Esther, she's it was, it was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think uh, for her, her approaches, her tone, because even before she met the king, she even appeased the people who were even um, even, even training them to even meet the king. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So amongst all the people that were sampled, she also had she equally had like favor amongst them. Mm -hmm. And that led to her even being chosen by the tribe. Mm -hmm. So um, for the concept of feminine pride, take it in several forms. Mm -hmm. Yes, the beauty is there. How you de deliver your information, mm -hmm. how you respect the person. And it's it's a it's a great exit in, in 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 a larger picture. It brings out like the beauty of what you want to achieve. So it's better you use it for a good thing as other than um, um, something false. Yes. And something odd. Odd. Well, like I said, it depends. Something evil. We are we are in a spiritual okay. kind of okay. evil is also not relative. Is it? Uh -huh. Something evil. Yes. Yeah, so if you are if you are not married, you can equally use it. You can contribute to uh, whatever your opinion is by delivering it in a very calm, positive way for them. Because I mean, yes, you are a woman, and then you have an opinion. You want to share it. If it's respectful enough, if it's calm enough, if you make your point well, you'll be heard, and then you just pray that you'll be. Your, your point will be taken. That's what you can do. The how far you can go is to deliver it and then feel that you're okay. And that's why in marriage too, if you want to deliver a message to your husband or anything, do the same calm, respectful approach with a little favor that you, you, you God gives you. You also be, be given the opportunity to get what you I, I've told you before that my foray into ministry began with the feeling. I saw a lady in the church and the way she was behaving with ministry and stuff. I became interested, feminine power. And so, in the, in, you can attract or you can charm, uh, whether you are married or not, you can lead a guy towards good or bad. <laughs> oh, there, oh, you should know. <laughs> And it tells you that a lot of things you want to tell you. If it's listening to your career, it will be into my trailers. So, yeah. You see, the fact is that Beyonce knows that. He says, girls, girls. So, that's it. If if all of the ladies in the church decided to be influenced from good in the church, it will shock you the extent to which will be will go. If you all of you decided to promote modesty, promote chastity, promote whatever thing you may add, I tell you. But if you decided to go the extra, the other way, and not so so sad. So there is a lot of there's a lot of power you have in the way you dress, in the way you talk, in the way you walk. Because guys are influenced by movement, right? The things we see. And we don't like seeing blocks. So imagine what we like to see. All right, let's go on. So Esther, she influenced her family for good and also one who she sought. He sought um, counsel. And I, I am going to explain this. Like Rahab, the Christian woman, the, one, the woman that is able to create the home must be a woman of faith. 
We know the story of Rahab, right? Or Rahab, which one? Rahab. Rahab. That's one. That's the one. We know. That's the one we know. Rahab. Rahab. Right. What's what's her story? Nancy, you know about her. You know. Who else? Yes. Mrs. some level of fear because of what their God has been doing for them in the past. So, she had not experienced this God before. She did not have a personal kind of relationship, but based on what she had seen and heard, she was able to recognize that this God must be some, some great God. And out of that faith, in this unseen, unknown God, she behaved that way towards the spies. And that is why the Hebrew writer, writer would credit her, her actions and um, um, appropriate it in terms of her, her faith. Whatever she was expecting was not clear, right? So whatever this God was going to do, it was not evidence before her eyes, but she could, out of faith, imagine. 
there's it's a long we we cannot read everything. We must try to make sense of art of, of it. So you see, the Christian home is built on faith. Because even though we are Christian, it is not everything that we are privy to, right? It is not everything that we have when we need them. Some, we must have faith. We must trust God that what we believe he will do, eventually he would what? Do. <laughs> you see, when you have a wife of faith in the home, there is nothing that you cannot achieve together. Faith in God, faith in self, faith in both of you and what you are doing. You see, some want to have every, every, they are looking for evidence, right? Tangible, before they take a step, before they do anything. Some who want to look at your bank account, look at your, your car, your house. I always say this. When my wife married me, I was a national service person. Yes. She huh? Huh? She married me. Well, she agreed to marry me. Ah, she, she took a risk with me. I don't know. You know, and sometimes I don't know what she saw. Potential. Potential. Huh? Hey. Intuition. <laughs> yes. yes. But you know, not here because you are not a prostitute. <laughs> not here. Maybe in another section. So you see, you and I always say this, and I'm not sure she'll be comfortable. But even at her house, when she wanted us to start, I was not ready. So whatever you see today is because of her faith and vision. It was not something I wanted at the time. Although she would not say it like uh, Esther would. But, <laughs> but eventually it happened. And whoever thought her actions, whoever, and there were people who thought she was crazy in marrying me. You get it. But her faith, the risk she took. In some ways, we are not there yet, but at least. At least. So, a word to the wife is in Rehab's house. <laughs> <laughs> so, faith. When a wife is a faithful person, it engenders faith in the. And remember, from what we know from scripture, even children inherit the faith of their of their maternal ancestry, yes, in units and lots. So children can also inherit faithlessness and and and, and skepticism and, and doubt from So what kind of a, a woman are you? Because the kind of woman you are will determine the kind of wife you become. There is there is not a huge disconnect between who you are now and the kind of wife you become. If you are the 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 cash in her hand, who am I now? Well, so the wife, please tell me the time. Maybe we'll finish with this, my, my favorite story. Like Naomi, the wife of the Christian woman must be a considerate and altruistic woman. Why are we
I make sure, you know, like when I'm here, I look at your faces for a second now. So be careful how you project your face. <laughs> now, we know the story of Naomi, right? Yes. What's the story? I want a female to tell us. Because every almost every women's ministry have had a class on Naomi. But none of them turned out to be Naomi. <laughs> Uh -huh. What's the story? I'm <laughs> yeah? waiting to review. What's the story? Hey, no. She's not here. Yeah. Uh, Lizzie, what's the story? Hey, Binky, uh -huh. what's the story? Huh? Oh. Yes. I thought you meant from a place to a place. You don't have to a place to a place. Um. Oh. What's the name of the husband? No. Later, the husband died. Hold on. That's, so, Naomi, you know, the wives lost two husbands, but Naomi lost what? Three. A husband, two sons. What that means is this. You know, in the, in the first century, when, when women had not been economically independent, your your present provision came from your husband, and your future provision came from your sons. sons. And so, in one day, I'm not sure if it was a certain, Naomi lost his present source of livelihood and her future source of what? Livelihood. They were all gone. And so, what do you think would be the mental, psychological disposition of such a woman? Don't you think she will be bitter? And bitter people are always wicked people. Right? But, this was not the case in the case of Naomi. Yes. So what, what is, what is accepted? Say again. Sad. Okay, so, well, I will defend myself if you want me to. Sad, sad people, depressed people are hopeless. They have no interest in life. Say again. I'm to her grieving. So immediately, she reacts like that. She decided, 
and depressed and everything. But maybe subsequent when it goes on for a while, and then she still. I agree. I agree with what you are saying. But part of the mentality of depressing people is that they feel life has not dealt well with them. In some ways, they, they become better with life. It may not be chronic. You get it. It may recede at a certain point. You get it. But you, we cannot rule it out. So I agree with you. But I would think that with, with the magnitude of her loss, you know, but could be could have been okay. She would, could have been able to rationalize the loss. But in the present, nobody. In the future, nobody. What? Dear Kwan, my. You get it. I may be wrong. You may also be wrong. So. But, and people like this are not. You don't get people like this treating people well, particularly if they have not really processed what they are going through. Sometimes they want other people to experience what they are experiencing. That is the, the wickedness with which they deal with people. But Naomi called his daughters-in-law and told them, my sons are gone, and there's no way, there's no use for you here. So I am willing to set you free. Go and look for husbands. I think this, 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 this is wonderful from somebody who is going through pain. She does not focus on her own pain, but focus on the well-being of others. I think it is sometimes uncommon. We naturally want to pull people into our sorrow and not push them towards happiness. That's what I'm making me work. You work with a better boss. It's a more better show. Yes, what you have you. But he's giving to you the only thing he has. Naomi was considerate. She wasn't only concerned about her feelings and how bitter, how bad they are, or they were. She wanted the best for others, even though life had not given her fun. She wanted to put sugar in the lemonade of others so that the taste would be different from what she was drinking. The woman in the Christian home, if she exhibited this consideration, creates a better home. You see, in the family life, things are not always going to be rosy. You will not get the things you want or desire, you ask for. What is going to be your response? In words and in deeds.
the effect on the next person. You see, one of the charms, one of the power in, in, in the life of women is their words. Yeah. The word of a woman can make you lose an erection just in seconds. Something that has taken you time to do. <laughs> it may be graphic, but I want you to know the power in your words. Particularly on your husband. Your husband feeds on the words of their wives. It makes them strong or makes them weak. For what also has always been saying about his wife being like when he, he married him, he has nothing to do with If the wife has constantly been pointing to him that part, will he be able to find the way that he wouldn't? So the wife being considered will help the husband to be able to um, work out all this thing. That's true. She was here. <laughs>
if you lie down in bed and sleep at night, because of the, the kind of words you, you enjoy from your mind. So, let's, let's be considered. You see, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you know, Paul talks about what love is, right? He says that love is kind, one of it. Kindness is not always in terms of gifts. Kindness is sometimes in terms of words. Be kind with your words. Kindness is giving to someone what he may not merit. So the words you are telling me, my actions may not merit it, but you give it to me anyway. And so these are ways by which and sometimes some men do not go out to drink alcohol. They go out to drink kind words. And so they spend time talking to other females who would affirm them and validate them and make them feel like they are also the man, a man. And so if, if a man has a home where kind words are constant, regular, there will be no need for him to step out. To go out. So let us learn these things and practice them. The word of a woman is not how the fact that you suffer the bad diarrhea. So move up. And ding, 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 ding. And you know, as some of the KBR, they are like bullets. You cannot pick them back, right? And then whatever, whatever uh, gap distance between the two of you is deepening. So let's be careful with our words. When Naomi showed consideration to the daughters in law, one of them became loyal to her. And 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 can't tell me say me ya right? And so that is what happens to a man that that is is drawn in considerate words. He he becomes loyal to you, heart, body, mind, and soul. His mind is filled, is saturated with your words. And so no other, no other from anybody is able to sink in. Your God becomes his God. Wherever you go, he follows. Loyalty. And that is where some people in any why they do. What many do? So give you visual check, not all. <laughs> Alright. So these are ways by which a Christian home can be created, can be built. So let us note all these things and begin to practice it. Practice it. And I'm sure. Um, guys, those of us who graduate from here, I think you have, you need to make a Christian home um, part of your your life goals. Because if you feel in that home, you have essential things. May God bless the hearing of His word. Amen. 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 Any thoughts? Feedback? Question? Uh -huh. From last week? Uh -huh. So last week, uh, we said that um, the main reason why men marry is because they want to have, we want to have legitimate sex. If, it, if that's the main reason, I mean, think. Or is there a higher idea? If there is a higher ideal, then I'm thinking maybe we need to get the basic sex or get past it. Well, of course, there must be something higher. And, but sometimes th there must be, there is something higher. Um, 
and the, the basic expectation would, in my view, would influence the realization of these higher things in the whole. Um, yes, before you marry anybody, a man, he must show leadership, he must show, and we have talked about the quality, the, what it means to be a leader. A leader must know, must have a goal, an agenda, and he must be able to sell that to you. But underneath all these things is that reality. You get it? And so, yes, there must be something higher. But I think we should also not uh, be oblivious about this basic need, this basic assumption. Have I answered your question? Yes, but is it possible to get past it? Get past? Well, it, it based on the individual. Okay? If, if you are not a monk or a Catholic priest, or Mungo Yate says, is that a book? And if you can grow past that need, fine. But I, I can't say that here. You get it? Uh -huh. So I think. It depends on the individual. If there will be ever a time where your need for sex would be, uh, would be certain. But I don't think it's for nothing that it's for the basic need. It is critical for your survival. So if you can get past it and, 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 and survive on food, then you'll be fine. Any other? All right, um, let's, let's be up and sing a prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for these words. We pray and ask that the Spirit will lead us to understanding and appreciating all these truths so that we can build Christian homes, homes that reflect that which is in heaven. We commit the rest of the worship into your hands. Help us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
That is in 74. And Samuel Ahim will give us our first prayer.
You pray to God, you pray for me to today's service, put your faith. Then you Lord, you see this tree, and I'm here, and glory and adoration is given to me. Be with us and then be with those on their way coming. So that in all we shall give glory and honor to your name. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 As we sit, let's meditate on hymn number 49. 
Like the hymn now said everything that happened on the cross. It says, when I, I surveyed the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and poor, and poor content on all my pride. Verse 2. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord, all in vain things that charm me most. I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did air such love and sorrow met, our thorns compose so rich a crown. Where the whole realm of, of, of nature mine, that were a present far too small, Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, and my all. Father, as we take it, we will not set ourselves up for disappointment, but we just say separately that we will never be free. However, Father, we pray that you grant us the strength to be able to withstand all temptations. Father, we pray that you intercede on our behalf as you interceded on Peter's behalf. In Jesus' name, have we pray. Amen. Amen. number
sand from uh, for sacrificing or, or, or for dying for, for us is only sand. And this was backed by love. God did this based on love. So whilst we are here, um, it doesn't matter the, uh, the amount of money we, we have on ourselves, the amount of money that we, we, we have to give with love and out of our hearts. It's not based on a uh, uh, compulsion. It's based on what you decided from your hostels and your, your houses. Let's give out of love to help um, take us. We shall invite our sons later to give us a song as we take our Men for Men for to such persons in your own due time so that they can also um, show their love to you the next time we come here thank you for hearing us in christ's name how we pray amen amen, amen.
expressing my wish to mention about singing his praises loudly and walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. In the bright sun, in the bright sun. Amen. Amen. 